If you're watching this video on your phone or laptop, it wouldn't even be possible if it weren't for this Bengali physicist. His phenomenal invention laid the foundation for early wireless communication and paved the way for its widespread success today. And he achieved all of it by working from a small 20 square foot room in Presidency College, Calcutta in the late 1800s. But why do you never hear of him much today? despite this phenomenal invention. You look anywhere for who invented radio or wireless communication and you will not see his name. Instead, you'll see G. Marconi, an Italian who is credited with inventing and commercializing radio. So what exactly happened? Did he steal the idea and not give credit? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Pranav. You're watching Science is Dope and this is the story of wireless communication. Our story begins in the 1800s with James Clerk Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. There are four equations that beautifully explain the behavior of all of electricity and magnetism. Simple and powerful as they were, they also made some crazy predictions. One prediction was the existence of electromagnetic waves or EM waves, waves of oscillating electric and magnetic fields traveling through space. When Maxwell used his equations to calculate the speed of these waves, he obtained the number 300 million meters per second. Sound familiar? Yes, this was known to be the measured value of speed of light at that time. But was this a coincidence? Maxwell didn't think so. According to him, light was an electromagnetic wave. But there was no experimental observation to support any of this. They were merely a theoretical result from his equations. That was until 25 years later in 1888 when the German physicist Heinrich Hertz performed a series of experiments. He managed to produce an oscillating electric field that in turn produced an oscillating magnetic field, which Hertz detected using a detector placed at a distance. He had just confirmed the existence of EM waves, which were only theoretical up until that point. And when he measured their speed, it was exactly the speed of light. These waves were called Hertzian waves or radio waves. This discovery created a flurry of enthusiasm among scientists and engineers as they rushed to explore these ideas and put them to good use. One particularly lucrative field was in the area of wireless communication. And that's where the story brings us to our next stop, India. Earth had demonstrated that you could transmit and detect radio waves. But could you communicate using them? For that, you would need a receiver and not a detector. A detector can only detect the presence of radio waves, but a receiver can also identify exactly what that wave was. These receivers already existed at the time. However, their capability was severely limited and they only worked for a range of about 1-2 to two kilometers, ineffective for longer range communication. The main bottleneck was the sensitivity of the receivers. You see, in those days, there were no amplifiers. So the more sensitive you could make the receiver, the better the clarity of communication and the more you could push its range. And that is where the Indian scientist that I talked about comes into the picture. His name was Jagadish Chandra Bose. J.C. Bose studied at the University of Cambridge before returning to India in 1885 to become a professor at Presidency College, Calcutta. At that time, this was unusual because the position was reserved for Europeans. The other professors did not want him there and he was only paid one third the salary of his peers. Yeah, the racism was pretty bad back then but none of it hindered Bose. In fact, as a mark of protest, he refused to accept even the one-third salary that they gave him. Battling all obstacles, he focused his attention on teaching and research. In 1895, he made a public demonstration in the town hall of Calcutta displaying the wonders of radio waves. He generated radio waves in one room which traveled through wall and rang a bell in another room. Radio waves could travel through walls and convey information. In the same demonstration, he ignited gunpowder kept far away using radio waves. This explosion marked the beginning of his venture into the field of wireless communication. And he went on to tackle the most challenging problem there was. The problem of building high sensitivity wireless receivers, also called coherers. Let's try and understand this a bit better. What is a coherer? It's a very simple device that you can build at home like this. These plugs or screws or whatever are metallic conductors, but they have a gap between them. And so the circuit is not complete. 
but this gap was filled with metal filings. One of the nodes of the coherer was connected to the antenna and the other to the ground. When an EM wave was detected, it would cause the filings inside to cohere or stick together to create a path for the current to flow through. Or in other words, the resistance of the device would drastically reduce in the presence of radio waves, causing a surge in current. This current could then be used to ring a bell or decode the information being sent. But there was a problem. In addition to the sensitivity problem that I mentioned before, there was another issue with these coherers. Check out the demo. Can you spot this problem? Yes, that's right. The fan keeps spinning even after the spark subsides. You need to tap the coherer to reset it. Tapping the coherer would cause the metal filings to break contact or in other words, decohere them. There were circuits that did this, but they were not as effective. These were the problems that Bo set out to solve as he conducted his research in a small room in Presidency College. He wanted to build a sensitive coherer capable of decohering easily. And in 1895, he came up with a plan for this and published it in the English journal Electrician. His paper was well received with prominent scientists noting that if Bose perfected his design, it would lead to a technological revolution. And four years later in 1899, perfect it, he did. In a paper titled On Self-Recovering Coherer and the Cohering Action of Different Metals, he published his design of the iron mercury iron coherer with a telephone detector. As the name suggests, it was a highly sensitive coherer capable of self-decohering. To quote Bose himself, in this coherer, no tapping was necessary to restore the sensitiveness. The recovery was automatic and rapid. His friends and peers egged him on to patent his design, but Bose chose instead to publish it without any patenting. He did not believe in patents. He was a strong advocate for the public sharing of scientific knowledge and believed that its pursuit should be motivated by the desire to benefit humanity and not for profit or personal gain. He argued that patents restricted the spread of knowledge and hindered the progress of science. And he kept the spirit alive throughout his life. In fact, when he founded the Bose Research Institute in 1917, patenting of the work done there was actively discouraged. Now, unlike Bose, if you want to secure your financial future, then all you have to do is enrolled with the sponsor of this video, Coding Invaders. They offer an IT profession from scratch to employment course, which helps you avoid the risk of wasting time and money in getting an IT job you may not like. This is a nine month course that comes with a 100% employment guarantee agreement. In the first six weeks of the course, you learn about the different IT fields and then choose the right program with the help of a career counselor from Coding Invaders. Then you learn about that IT profession from scratch for eight months. There is also one month internship that you'll do post which you will land a guaranteed job. The students who enrolled with them got 10 to 25 lakhs worth packages. Project case study modules are designed and instructed by industry experts from Amazon, Philips, Deloitte, and many more. I'll tell you how confident they are on that job placement guarantee. Before enrollment, you'll have a money back guarantee agreement, which means if you don't land a job after completion of the course, the full amount paid by you will get refunded. So what are you waiting for? Enroll now in the job guarantee batch with a free counseling call. The link is in the description and in the top comment. And the first 100 candidates who use the code SID20 will get 20% off on the job guarantee batch. While Bose was busy building coherers, there was another man thousands of miles away working along similar lines. And instead of approaching it from a scientific viewpoint, he looked at it from another angle, a practical and commercial angle. He wanted to build radio communication systems that could be scaled and used worldwide. This man was the Italian inventor G. Marconi. Marconi built on the work of Hertz and others and tried to extend the range of wireless communication. He improved it by experimenting with various antenna shapes and sizes, polarizing the radio waves and using different frequencies. But unlike Bose, Marconi patented everything he did. In fact, the very first patent in radio communication bears his name on it. With these modifications, he managed to increase the range ever so slightly. He needed a major breakthrough 
to push things further. And this breakthrough came on December 12, 1901. From a transmitting station in Cornwall, England, a message was transmitted which was three clicks, dot, 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 or the letter S in Morse code. At a distance 3,500 kilometers away in Newfoundland, Canada, Marconi waited patiently, his ears focused on the receiver, and then he heard click, click, click. He had successfully received the message and carried out the first ever transatlantic radio communication, a feat considered impossible by many scientists of the time. And with that, he revolutionized the field of wireless communication. But the events of that day were mired in controversy. Among scientists, there was skepticism brewing and rightly so. Their major concern was that Marconi's demonstration was under controlled conditions. He knew that the other station was transmitting the letter S, so he knew what to look for. And by Marconi's own accounts, the three clicks he heard were faint and sporadic. Could it not have been noise that he heard? Did his mind trick him into hearing it? Because there was no independent scrutiny of this event and the accuracy of his claims could not be verified. This deeply upset Marconi and he set out to dispel all criticism. He repeated his experiment, albeit over half the original distance, and showed that in fact he could carry out communication over thousands of kilometers. But the controversy refused to die down so easily. There was another part of the scandal, a much more accurate accusatory claim. The claim was that Marconi had stolen the work of other scientists, specifically the design of the coherer. Whether this claim is legitimate is difficult to know for certain because the details of Marconi's demonstration are not well documented. Some parts of the story are not fully known even today. Nobody knows what coherer Marconi used because he never elaborated on it. However, investigations have been carried out by analyzing the interviews given and the public statements of the people involved. One such extensive investigation is by P.K. Bandhupadhyay or P.K.P. for short, a senior member of I. Triple The link to his paper is in the description. In his paper, PKP provides excerpts of an interview given by Marconi in 1902, where he clearly mentions the use of a coherer with telephone without going into its details. You'll remember that Bose had a similar idea. The iron mercury iron coherer with a telephone detector. A few months after this interview, a professor who comes across this becomes suspicious of Marconi and accuses him of fraud. He says that Marconi did not invent the coherer but it was the work of an Italian Navy officer. He calls it the Italian Navy coherer. In response to this, Marconi shoots back saying that it was not that officer but another Navy officer, Lieutenant Sullari who had invented the coherer and given it to Marconi. Further investigations into this Solari guy and his public statements revealed a letter written by him to the newspaper Times London. In this letter, Solari himself mentions that it was not him that had invented the design, but it was an idea he had read in some paper in some English journal. While he did not elaborate which paper or which journal it was, given the evidence, it's very likely that it was Bose's paper on self-recovering coherers that he had come across in the journal Electrician. Marconi had most likely used Bose's design for his receiver. According to PKB, Marconi's claims were fraudulent and intended to deliberately create confusion and divert attention away from Bose. And do you know what's the craziest part of this whole investigation? In the conclusion of the paper, PKP mentions the name of another person. He thanks this person for motivating him to dig deeper into the story and investigating the origins of the coherer. You want to know who this person is? Marconi's own daughter, G. Marconi Praga. Apparently, she was upset that newspapers were accusing her father of refusing to share credit. She believed Marconi's claims to be genuine and wanted PKB to investigate and find out whether this is true. PKB's investigation, however, revealed that it was most likely not. To quote him, I'm a historian, I find the facts and publish the facts. This story is such a roller coaster. Controversy or not, Marconi's transatlantic communication was a huge step. It garnered a lot of interest in the field and triggered a sequence of events that led to the widespread use of radio communication. In 1906, the first licensed radio station was established in New Jersey. In 1909, the first ship to shore communication took place using radio waves. The 1920s saw radio communication 
for entertainment purposes and by the 40s you could listen to music on the radio to top it all off portable transistor radios in the 50s coupled with the advent of satellite communication in the 60s enabled the radio to go international and reach people's homes wireless communication today is much more complex than it was a hundred years ago you can stream high quality videos with almost zero lag using your mobile phones frankly it's pretty impressive that we achieved so much in just over a century and it all started with the work of brilliant scientists and inventors maxwell hertz bose and marconi before closing this video i want to share my thoughts on this whole bose marconi affair Firstly, I think it's great that there was an Indian scientist whose contributions led to the birth of a whole new field. Working with limited resources and funding, he managed to achieve what many scientists with proper backing could not. It's definitely a story to learn and seek inspiration from. Secondly, I don't think just saying that Marconi stole Bose's idea is the best way to go because that implies that Marconi did nothing. Not true. His work in commercializing it is what made radio and wireless communication today so widespread. And Bose made his work open source. He wanted the world to use it. And Marconi just did just that. Bose and Marconi were vastly different people who approached the problem from different angles. Bose was concerned with a scientific question while Marconi was concerned with a practical one. And both were needed to carry forward the field of radio communication. However, when people speak about the invention of radio, it's always Marconi's name that pops up and not Bose's. I would like to see that change and have Bose's work receive the same kind of recognition and widespread acclaim as Marconi's. You can support me by buying my merch. I have new designs available. A lot of thought has gone into this so check them out either below this video or through my website. Links down below. If you like this video you might also like this one I did on fear mongering that happens around wireless technology. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, remember, science is dope.